Hello my friends and channel subscribers, Greg here from Brisbane, Australia with another uncut, unedited, no bull video. Today's video about Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra. People say it's the best phone of the year. Well, let's have a look. First of all, as many of my reviews, this review is unbiased, there's no BS, and I wanted to make review from consumer point of view. If you would like some hyped up video that's sponsored by Samsung or anyone else, please tune out, find different channel. I won't talk about uh, benchmarks, um, photo shoots and all of that stuff. Honestly, when I was researching whether I should or shouldn't buy S22, uh, I watched so many reviews and they all started like this. You've got amazing CPU, amazing memory, the cameras are the best, the screen is amazing, uh, the software Samsung need to work on, uh, the phone is great, awesome. How that would help me as a user of the phone, everyone uses phone differently. So as a user, would you, like you could be a gamer, I'm not making any assumption, but uh, many people that I know are not gamers on the phones. They want uh, a benchmark CPU, overclock CPU, think about memory. Those things are not practical. They're paid by companies to distinguish themselves better than any other brand. And I had a couple of really good brands. Um, actually bought my parents recently uh, Poco F3, which is an amazing phone for money and has really good specs. But you know, you cannot compare this one to other one based on specs. So this review is not about specifications of the phone. This review is for people or majority of people out there that use it as a daily driver for phone calls, banking, uh, I guess, couple of pictures, messaging, they care about better life, fingerprint security updates, things like that. So if you're interested in that particular subject, um, this is kind of your review. And to be honest, I could not find anything like that on a, on the web because most of the people biased by companies that pay their money or provide them device. I bought the device with my own money and I'm not Samsung uh, fanboy. Um, I had many other phones, including uh, a lot of different uh, Chinese phones. I know that most of the phones made in China right now, but I'm talking Chinese, Chinese brands. And I'm trying to think what I use it for, uh, what is there for me and, and so on. So here it is. Is this best phone of the year? Um, I'd say no. Uh, and the reason is that not because I'm not happy with it. Because if you in Apple ecosystem, Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra is not best phone of the year for you. Uh, for example, I've got a Samsung watch that I'm not quite happy with. It's Galaxy Watch 4 and I posted a uh, post link to all my reviews um, up there. I'm not quite happy with that watch, but for that watch to work, to work with the phone, I'm somehow locked into Samsung ecosystem. Same with Apple people. I really would love to have Apple Watch because I believe Apple Watch for now is somehow superior to Samsung Watch. It's debatable and that's not review about watches, but I could not use Apple Watch with this phone. And if I choose Apple phone, I wouldn't be able to get my um, data, a lot of it from Samsung Watch. So. Uh, best phone of the year? Definitely no. If you are an Apple fan or got Apple F ecosystem, by all means go with Apple. They are amazing devices. I am not. I base my infrastructure on Android and I like Android. I like everything about it. So let's stick with Android. Now, best phone of the year. What that even means? That means that it would do everything well that you wanted to do. What is well for me? You may not believe, but first criteria was the battery life. Um, Samsung is notorious bringing like amazing screen, amazing CPUs and all of that. Uh, speaking of CPUs, in Australia they had uh, Exynos CPU for years and that was a disaster. So this is the first one that has a Qualcomm CPU and it's an amazing change for Samsung. So battery life, 
tied into CPU type and how CPU manages the processes. I tell you what, uh, on the first day when I got it, um, I charged it to 100% and with all setup, and setup is CPU and memory and screen intensive, and I spent a lot of time on the, on the, on the phone, I got um, at the end of the day to 17%. I was a little bit disappointed because battery here is uh, 5000 milliamps. That's just a large battery. Um, so, and then I thought like, all right, uh, let's see how next day progresses. So what happens then? Your phone learn pattern of the application that you use and don't use and intelligently put applications that you don't use asleep. So on the first day, it's impossible because you're using all applications. There's a lot of updates. You uh, you got a lot of registrations, a lot of screen time, a lot of intensity. Since my first day, I'm not kidding. I'm starting my phone at um, four or five o'clock in the morning and shutting down at uh, seven. Not literally shutting down, but uh, uh, put it on uh, on silent from four a.m. till seven p.m. There was no one day that I end up with a battery less than fifty percent. And I would consider myself heavy-ish uh, phone user. So if you wonder about 5,000 milliamps battery life on Samsung Galaxy 22 Ultra, it is amazing. Uh, there are a lot of different opinions on the internet. I'm just sharing mine. The battery is amazing for me. I never push my phone to uh, two days use. I'm not that kind of guy. I really would like to know that I've got one day and everything that I would like to do in that phone, I can cram into one day. Uh, people, 50% uh, minimum um, um, any single day. Most of the day finishing at 55, 60% amazing battery life. Let's move on. Screen. I don't want to talk about screen at all. I don't know any Samsung phone that screen wasn't the best or one of the best on the market and that year they released the phone. So by uh, no meaning, I don't want to talk about benchmarks and gaming and all of that stuff. <clears throat> screen is amazing, it's amazing to look at, it's amazing what it does, great. Now it's related to the screen and um, we're talking about uh, fingerprint sensor. Uh, I had a couple of different sensors on the back of the phone, on the side of the phone, and on the display. I literally don't mind any sensor position. Somehow, I probably don't like screen sensor for two reasons. First, uh, it's always uh, leave um, finger marks on the, on the screen. Uh, and second is, uh, in my opinion, they were not as good before. I've got no complaint about this. It's fast, it's reliable. The only times uh, is uh, it's not quite reliable when hands getting dry. So you basically uh, moisturize them a little bit and uh, fingerprint sensor is phenomenal. Uh, one tip or tips and tricks, uh, maybe I'll, I'll create another video, but one tip you can create with same finger, multiple fingerprints uh, within uh, settings and it will be more accurate. I didn't do, I created once, works for me well. So, battery is amazing, screen is amazing, fingerprint is great. Now, let's talk about cameras. Again, I'm not here to compare any <coughs> uh, photo shots uh, from different phones and all of that, but look at the size of those lens. And sometimes, you know, you see big size and then pictures not uh, quite good. Uh, what did I do is um, I had Carnival, uh, my little boy, his five was running, it was 200 meters away and I zoomed on him with the video, right, and it was run. Um, after processing, looking at that video on uh, Google Photos, it's amazing. It's a tiny bit shaky considering it's a, a lot of magnification, right, but the vision is clear, it's beautiful. And look, I'm not benchmarking cameras, but if you ask me, cameras are great. I did not have any phone in my life with better cameras. Let's stop at that. You won't be disappointed by cameras. The speed, the clarity, the quality of the pictures, great. Now, another one. Let's talk about um, uh, CPU and memory a little bit. That's where S22, a uh, little bit of gotcha, 
So I'm not sure what market you on and what CPU you get inside. If you got Qualcomm, it's a great CPU. I'm not gonna talk about this. There's nothing to talk about. It's the most uh, up-to-date CPU, um, performing well. Now memory. If you buy S22 128 gig version, I think you got less memory in it. It's worthwhile to bump up to 256. I bumped it my 2512 and explain why in a second. I want to go for gig, but then I just, uh, I didn't get color that I wanted and I thought like, hey, 512 is enough. So if you buy 128, you get less internal memory. And I think for Android is important, especially if you spend that much money on the phone. Just remember, all internals will be the same, just less memory. Less memory at 128 internal storage, that will be half of it probably will be taken by Android, so you will run out very quick. And also less processing memory for applications to run on background. I would discourage you to get in 128 gig version. So 256, 512 or 1 gig if you wish to. Uh, the reason why I got 512, um, I create a lot of videos uh, for YouTube and everything, and I tend not to delete those videos. Um, <laughs> the moment I get to 512, it's time to change my phone, so I'm good. Maybe next phone will be one gig. At the moment, 512 is enough for me, and price was right. Speaking about price, um, this is where I'm a little bit disappointed, disappointed with Samsung. Uh, how would I say it? Um, it is not a cheap phone. It's a premium phone. It's a top show phone. But who pays $2,000? We're talking about Australian dollars for a phone. That's just disgraceful. Um, people still buying, so it's supply demand kind of pressure. Um, I post link down below uh, where you can get cheaper one. Also, a little be a little bit creative. Send me personal message if you need to know more. But um, it's an amazing phone. It probably not worth that money that Samsung asking as a full price. If you get it at discounted rate, you won't be disappointed. That's an amazing phone. Now, uh, another thing that I would like to talk about is uh, what you're getting with that phone. That was a big disappointment. Actually, I didn't touch the box for a while. So the phone comes with nice, very slim box. And you're getting a hint, there will be not much inside. And it wasn't a disappointment because I'm all for environment. I would like to preserve all those charges, cables that we're getting with every single phone and they end up uh, um, in a landfill, I don't like that. And I think it was a great idea for Samsung not supply charger because we've got so many USB charges from other phones. Um, if you need fast charger, it's a different um, purchase and definitely uh, the charger that was always supplied with the phone wasn't good enough. So I was kind of happy that you don't get charger. But what do you get? Um, let's quite quickly have a look. So the phone was laying on top here, which was great. And then you get little packaging. And within the packaging, you got a set of instruction and this cable. And I'm just looking at it and I say, I just paid close to $2,000 for the phone. And you're not providing charger, but the charger you're giving it's USB-C to USB-C. It's really good for transfer of data from other phone. But if I got my old power supplier, how I would use this cable for charging my phone? I was really, really disappointed that Samsung did not provide uh, USB Type-C to normal USB connection. So it can plug to your old charger. How much more would cost that little plug? And that's where my beef with Samsung. They go almost 100% at design, quality, um, sometimes support. But little things like that, letting them down. And I'm actually happy that they did not provide uh, uh, earphones as well. For some people, it's important. For me, uh, look, the quality they provided, not, no people that I know use the uh, earphones, it's all good. No charger good, no earphones good. But come on, that cable, what can I do with it? 
like honestly that that exactly will end up in landfill because I will use all my other cables and if I need no more cable I will buy another one so Samsung big disappointment now let's talk about um, projection so another disappointment was that uh, the previous version of my phone S10 was supplied with screen protector this phone is not supplied with screen protect protector or case right so three things to know it's very really durable structure and everything but your big screen is very vulnerable you need something to protect it and there is no protector on it also because lens are hold on lens are so big they actually can scratch now and you need to protect your lens as well so what do you do with that I decided not to go with the front protector because it reduces sensitivity to display and fingerprint and also in my in my uh, personal use I never had luck with them they were kind of awkward they were peeling they were not quite sitting well it's alright look it's just my own opinion but the case that I've chosen many users uh, reported that it is a great case and reason is that you may not see but it protrudes a little bit above the screen here it has really decent bumper bars here and on the lens section it has kind of uh, bumper bar as well so when you put it on the surface you're not touching your lens when phone drops down actually those bars on top and bottom prevent for screen touching the ground and i dropped the phone a couple of times already a couple of times on the side and a couple on the screen and as you can see everything working well there's no problems so most of the cases especially supplied by samsung are highway robbery they cost so much it's not funny i bought the screen uh, on amazon it's called ring fusion x that's actually quite really good case and if you see uh, it's really nice patterns to hold it to fill the buttons really good protection for everything really nice to hold because it doesn't slip and also protects your screen it's only cost something like um, I think 35 or 40 dollars I put link down below when I got mine and if you like me you don't want any fancy stuff here and you don't want to pay Samsung whatever 50 70 100 bucks for day flimsy screens this uh, screens are uh, protectors phone protectors this is protectors you have I use it for already like half year I think almost uh, maybe less uh, no scratches nothing very happy with the case now last thing I would like to talk about is the size of the phone is this phone for everyone of course not it's like a watch you've got different sizes you've got different sizes of phone it is quite big phone I've got quite big hands and I'm really happy how it fit, fits in the hand. If I would have smaller hand, I don't think it's quite great phone. It, it feels a little bit overwhelming if you cannot grip it well. It's a very big device. Uh, sadly, in the smaller devices, you won't get as good camera and some other things not as good. And... Um, S Pen as well. By the way, S Pen is great. Uh, I use it, but I don't really go mad about this. Uh, my first S Pen uh, I experienced in a Note series. I think it was Note 3. It was a gimmick-ish. Now it's a proper device that you can take pictures with it, like remotely if your camera uh, on, a, on, a, on a tripod or whatever. You can actually have commands like air commands with, this, with the S Pen. It's amazing. And also you can draw, manipulate a screen. It's sensitive, it's beautiful. It feels native. So S Pen is great too. Now let's go back to asking if this is phone of the year. If you're talking about phone of the year, there's no phone of the year 2022 because you need to pick your flavor and what you're using it for. Is it a great phone? Yes, I think it's the greatest phone so far in 2022. Would I recommend it? Yes, I would. And also, uh, it integrates well with everything. I think it's the first device that Samsung uh, committed to four years of security patches. Let's talk about patches and software. I had a couple of Chinese phones that had really amazing specs, but software was so unpolished, it was almost unusable. You need to hack and overhack, and every time 
uh, they push new software back into the phone, it breaks all your hacks again. With Samsung, I did not remove any bloatware and actually don't feel they put much in it or at all because obviously it doesn't bother me. But uh, software polished, everything working as it should. The, the, the battery is great, the display is great, the fingerprint is great, uh, NFC for banking, for whatever you're using is great. It's just an amazing phone. Uh, look, I'm, I think I'm reaching 20 minutes mark uh, right now and I'm very excited about this phone. I'm using it for a couple of months already. It's not slowing down. I've got no regrets of paying that much money for the phone. However, um, check out links below, find better pricing. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you need to know more, no bull opinion from a consumer, please send me a message, uh, comment below. I would appreciate it. Also, uh, if you would like to uh, uh, subscribe to my channel, I would greatly appreciate it. Um, thumbs up if you like this video and comment, comment, comment. Until next time, Greg from Brisbane, Australia. See ya.